Would Brachiosaurus make a good pet? I get this one requested a lot, and I have no idea why because the answer is kind of obvious. Brachiosaurus was a massive sauropod dinosaur which roamed the vast floodplains of North America during the late Jurassic, 155 to 143 million years ago. And when I say massive, I mean massive, measuring up to 70 feet long and potentially weighing in at over 30 metric tons. Keeping one contained will be no easy feat, but more on that in a minute. The first remains of Brachiosaurus came from an expedition in Colorado in 1900, led by Elmer Samuel Riggs, a prominent American paleontologist who worked a lot with the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago. Though Riggs is credited for the discovery, it was his field assistant Harold William Menck who spotted the massive humerus while prospecting in the area, being quoted as saying it was the biggest thing yet. And when they excavated more of the specimen, that claim soon became a reality. Riggs described the genus in 1903, revealing that he and his team found the remains of what was then the largest land animal ever discovered. A title Brachiosaurus held for almost a century, until the discovery of Argentinosaurus in 1993. The location where the excavation took place is now known as Riggs Hill, and more Brachiosaurus fossils have been reported there. But we're not talking about fossils, we are talking about flesh and blood. If Brachiosaurus was around today, could you keep one as a domestic pet? Despite being one of the most recognisable dinosaurs, in no part thanks to its appearance one of the most iconic scenes in cinema history, we actually know very little about Brachiosaurus. With there only being around 10 specimens discovered so far, we have little material to go on. However, Brachiosaurus does have relatives and so we can use them to piece together the parts of this animal we don't know about. One of the first things you'll likely want to know is how long this animal is going to live. And to put it simply, you'll probably be handing this pet down to your grandkids, as there's a good chance Brachiosaurus could have lived up to 80 years old, if not older. So when I say this is a long-term high commitment pet, I mean it. Quickly, we need to cover whether or not you can actually keep a Brachiosaurus based on your location. Back in the late Jurassic, the Morrison Formation was believed to have been a warm, semi-arid area experiencing wet and dry seasons throughout the year, and the landscape would have been very flat and subject to flooding after heavy rainfall. If your country somewhat matches this description, then you should be able to keep a Brachiosaurus. Even if your country gets a bit chilly sometimes, like me here in the UK, you might still be able to keep a Brachiosaurus. Evidence suggests that Brachiosaurus was a warm blooded animal. So we do actually have a lot of leeway with this animal when it comes to temperature. There are African elephants kept in zoos and wildlife parks here in the UK, and these animals are native to the very warm African savannas. So technically you should be okay keeping a Brachiosaurus in the UK, but any further away from the equator and you're going to run into problems with your Brachiosaurus being too cold. Now for the enclosure itself, and to start off with we need to find out how much land you will need to keep a Brachiosaurus. And to estimate this, we're going to work with a universal formula that'll help us determine the best minimum space to keep an animal, which is the the length of the animal in feet squared times 10. Assuming you are getting your Brachiosaurus from a baby, expect an animal that is already roughly 3 feet long and weighing 10 to 15 kilograms, as this seems to be a common size for hatchlings of sauropods that grow to be a similar size to Brachiosaurus. So to begin with, make sure you have an enclosure with an area of 90 square feet. However, this 3 feet long animal will not be 3 feet long for long. In fact, in just 5 years, it's going to achieve a length of about 15 feet and will be approaching a ton in weight. So a better idea would be to have an enclosure big enough to facilitate a Brachiosaurus for that 5 years, to avoid having to upgrade too frequently. Using the length estimate of about 15 feet, we can deduce an enclosure size of about 2,250 square feet. Like I said, if you start with an enclosure this size, you shouldn't have to upgrade for a good 5 years. However, after your Brachiosaurus passes 5 years old, it's going to begin growing rapidly. During the ages of roughly 6 to 12 years, it's going to reach its peak mass gain and grow an extra 30 odd feet, reaching a total of about 45 feet long, and likely weighing upwards of 10 tons by the time it's 12 years old, already heavier than a full grown African elephant. After this period, growth will slow down, however eventually your Brachiosaurus will be tipping off at about 70 feet long when it's just over 20 years old. So just as a reminder, you'll need a 90 square feet enclosure for when the animal first arrives, 2,250 square feet for the first 5 years, and then to house the 12 year old 45 feet long Brachiosaurus, you're going to need a 20,250 square feet enclosure. After this, I would likely aim for the fully grown enclosure of 49,000 square feet for a 70 feet long Brachiosaurus. But do keep in mind, this is for the bare minimum. The bigger you can make the enclosure, the better. Now that that covers the enclosure size, let's move on to how you're going to keep the animal contained. And like I said, it's not going to be easy or cheap. 
Ideally, you'd want to skip the 90 square feet enclosure, but if you are going to house a three feet hatchling for a very short time, you can literally use chicken wire. And again, it should be pretty simple for the five year enclosure. Your Brachiosaurus is going to have a size and weight comparable to a large bull. So a simple barbed wire fence or even a standard wire fence should suffice, so long as it's tall enough. And make sure the posts holding the fence are well secured into the ground. So to begin with, Brachiosaurus should be pretty easy and cheap to contain. During its peak mass gain from the ages of 6 to 12 years, however, it's going to surpass an African elephant in size. Now there are some zoo fences out there capable of housing African elephants. These include thick galvanized steel wire mesh on strong reinforced posts or electric fences. The key here is height. So long as the fence is sufficiently high enough, this should deter elephants from pushing against it or any attempts of escape. And an overhang at the top should also help. A 12 year old Brachiosaurus is likely to be a good two to three tons heavier than an African elephant. So I'd suggest finding the strongest fence on the market. However, as long as you follow the same rules, you should be fine. Just make sure it's a really tall fence. So how much is this fence going to cost? The Global Sanctuary for Elephants states that, quote, in the US, some elephant proof fences at elephant sanctuaries are known to cost up to $150 per foot to construct, end quote. Let's assume this is going to be double at $300, since we know it needs to be taller. If the enclosure is 20,250 square feet, you'll need 569 feet of this fence to surround the enclosure, making the cost a whopping $170,700, which is £124,398. As for the 49,000 square foot enclosure for your 70 foot long 30 ton behemoth, I'm sorry, but nothing but military grade concrete wall will do. Brachiosaurus is just far too big and heavy for any zoo grade fence. It'll either knock it down or simply step over it. No doubt we'd have fences on the market if Brachiosaurus was still around, however, that is not the case. So we need to get creative. This concrete wall has to span 885 feet to surround the 49,000 square foot enclosure. So it is going to be far from cheap and it will need to be custom built. You can get concrete T walls, also known as Bremer walls, which are reinforced concrete sections of wall that are used to defend military bases and are built to be resistant to ballistic threats and explosions. The issue with these walls is when looking online, the tallest ones available are only around 19 feet high, which is under half the height of a Brachiosaurus, which when fully grown could stretch its head over 30 feet high. If you are going to use these Bremer walls to house a Brachiosaurus, you will need to find a company out there that could make you custom extra reinforced Bremer walls that are even higher. Either way, it's going to be extremely expensive. How expensive? Well, I couldn't find an exact price, however, you are roughly looking at £1,500 per wall. The walls which are 19 feet high are generally 4.9 feet wide. Using this price, we'll assume the cost is going to be triple that of a standard Bremer wall. Let's imagine these walls are each 35 feet tall and 6 feet wide. You'll need 148 of them to surround a 49,000 square feet enclosure, costing £740,000. Also, make sure these walls are well stuck into the ground at the base and are heavily reinforced. Do keep in mind, Brachiosaurus, unlike Jurassic Park, won't rear up on its hind legs and lean its weight on the wall with its front. While this position may have been achievable for Brachiosaurus, its anatomy does not exactly make it easy. Brachiosaurus was more front heavy than other sauropods, and coupled with its longer forelimbs, rearing up would have been extremely difficult and energy intensive. That's if it could even do it at all. Remember, these estimates are for the bare minimum size for an enclosure, and I can't recommend a bigger enclosure enough. However, decorating said enclosure is going to be difficult. Brachiosaurus is a walking bulldozer. Any plant, tree, or rock will become one with the ground in a very short period of time. The one thing that is a necessity to have in the enclosure for your Brachiosaurus is access to clean, fresh water. This will need to be cleaned out and refreshed very regularly. Brachiosaurus doesn't get to its immense 30 tons for free. You have to facilitate that growth by feeding it, which is going to be the hardest, most soul destroying part of keeping a Brachiosaurus. With an estimated intake of 200 to 400 kilograms of plant matter every day, you are literally going to need truckloads of fresh vegetation. As you may have guessed based on its anatomy, Brachiosaurus was a high grazer, using its long neck to feed on plant material out of reach of other animals, like the tops of conifer trees, reaching even higher than other sauropods found in the Morrison Formation. This means that the mass amounts of vegetation needed to feed Brachiosaurus will have to be placed high up. One thing to note is that Brachiosaurus, like other sauropods, didn't chew its food. Therefore, you must ensure that you are not feeding large items. I'm not exactly sure what 400 kilograms of plant matter looks like, and I can't really give you any estimates around how much to feed it when it's young and growing. But what I can say is that it is going to be a massive headache 
when it's fully grown. I was quite surprised to find out how easy it appears to be to keep a younger Brachiosaurus. However, when it grows up, it's going to be entirely unrealistic. However, let's imagine that you are able to keep one, feed it, and keep it happy. How will it see you? being its owner. Will you be able to go up to it without fear of being crushed or kicked away? Well, to get a starting point, we need to look at Brachiosaurus intelligence. Sauropods are not considered very intelligent, as they have a low EQ, which is encephalization quotient, which essentially means their brain was really small in comparison to the rest of their body, which suggests a more simple nervous system and lower cognitive abilities, which means the chances of accidentally being stepped on are higher with Brachiosaurus than a more intelligent animal. On that subject, Brachiosaurus has absolutely no reason to fear you. In fact, they wouldn't really have had any predators at all once they were fully grown. But at the same time, it has no reason to particularly like you. You're just a little thing that's there, that's it. So, would Brachiosaurus have made a good pet? No. In fact, I can't think of a worse pet dinosaur than a Brachiosaurus, or any large sauropod for that matter. And that is the end of this video. I really do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. Oh my god. We're still- we set up this little setup and I'm still kind of getting used to it. And I do apologize if throughout the video I looked like I was looking below the camera. I was using an iPad for the teleprompter for the script and um, I don't have a proper setup yet for that. But make sure to follow me on TikTok because that's a new thing for me. And uh, Instagram links in the desk. Make sure to comment your suggestions for a paleo domestication video. Uh, comment any species, genus, whatever you want. And I will be sure to try and cover as many as possible. Anyway, catch you alls later. See ya. Off. And to start off with, we need to find out how... Ah, oh, table. These include thick galvanized steel wire mesh. These include... Oh, hell. These include thick galvanized steel wire met. What the f even is? These include thick galvanized steel wire met. What the f These include thick galvanized steel wire mesh on a strong on These include thick galvanized steel wire mesh on a strong reinf oh. These include thick galvanized steel wire mesh on a strong Oh, f off. Why?